to Promo Insiders, the ASI Media podcast that covers the issues that matter most to the promotional products industry. I'm Teresa Hegel, Executive Editor for Digital Content, and today I'm joined by Michael Staussholm, uh, the CEO and founder of Sprout World. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about trends in sustainability and some other topics. So thank you so much for joining us today, Michael. Thanks for having me. So let's start off with talking about um, you know the Sprout Pencil. That's kind of like the the signature product. Can you talk a bit, little bit about like what it is and how you came up with the idea for this? Of course, <clears throat> it's a very simple, basic uh, idea. Actually, it's it's a normal uh, graphite uh, pencil. Can also be a color pencil, as well as we have makeup uh, uh, liners. But the idea is that you write with your pencil uh, like you normally would, uh, and at the end, uh, you uh, in the end you have a stop left, and you normally throw that stop out. But uh, our Sprout Pencil, uh, instead of an eraser, has a small uh, seat capsule. So what you do is once uh, you reach to the stop level, you simply plant uh, the stop, just cover the uh, the capsule with the soil. First time you water it, uh, the capsule will dissolve and out will come the, um, the seeds. And then you take care of it like any other normal plant. Uh, this one is actually my uh, my business card has my name and uh, I, I don't think you can see it but it has my my name and mm -hmm. uh, my my title as well as it shows that this one contains spruce seeds seeds so you can actually grow your own uh, Christmas tree from uh, this uh, sprout pencil. Nice. So do you include when when you get when someone gets the pencil? Do they do you include instructions on how to plant it or how to take care of the seeds? Yes, normally uh, they are sold together with uh, uh, as what we call a single single card, which is uh, a card where the pencil is attached and where you can, uh, there's a QR code uh, you can scan, but there's also uh, planting instructions uh, on it. Okay, and where did the idea for this come from? Originally, the idea came from some young students at MIT in Boston. Uh, they put it on kickstarter.com uh, looking for, for funding. Um, where I got in touch with them uh, and made a deal to sell and distribute the, the product in uh, in Europe. I, I thought it was a great idea to show what uh, sustainability is, is all about. Uh, the whole thing of using a product for its original purpose and instead of throwing products out, you, in this case, literally give them uh, give it a second life by, by planting it. Um, so I thought it was a great product, uh, made the deal with them to sell distribute uh, and within a year, back in 2013-14, I purchased the uh, IP. Uh, we have a global patent for writing instruments you can plant uh, and acquired all the rights and they went on to, to other projects. Uh, they were robotic engineers actually. Okay, so there was a little bit off the beaten path for them. They wanted to build robots, not pencils you can plant. <laughs> so obviously, you know, the product has like a great sustainability story, like you're talking about with the second life when you plant the, the stub. But what are some of the other ways, uh, you know, Sprout World itself is promoting sustainability? Uh, in, in a lot of uh, ways, uh, I mean, sustainability, which is a very broad uh, <laughs> expression, is right. is in our DNA, is, is part of everything we do. Um, when when we take down one tree to make pencils from, we can actually make 175,000 pieces of sprout pencils from one tree. All, all the pencils are FSC, PFC certified, meaning we must plant at least one, often more, trees instead of the one we cut down. So, so we cut down one tree. We plant 100. And, uh, we we make 175,000 pieces of sprout pencils, which can then potentially be planted into 175,000 uh, pieces of uh, new spruce trees or basil plants or, or whatever. So, so that alone is is about biodiversity. It's about uh, learning people uh, to to do gardening, uh, urbanization, and so on. Um, we also, in addition, uh, our main production is in in Poland and Europe. Uh, we also have a production in Pine City in Minnesota. Uh, but in Poland, we have our own forest. Uh, we recently planted 12,000 trees, which are never going to be used for pencils. Uh, they're just going to grow for the next 30 to 50 years, uh, absorbing CO2, and then uh, one day they will uh, they'll be too old. But but simply to to get back where we take uh, in addition. 
We are also um, a, a P Corp uh, member, uh, mm -hmm. of course, which is uh, is great. Um, it's a great uh, stamp on our, on our our company, um, and we are. Um, for instance, uh, we, we do LCAs, life cycle analysis on all our products, every okay. single product, uh, to make sure that everyone can see how they're made, uh, where they're made and so on. Um, and and those help you to determine uh, if there's areas where you can make things more sustainable or kind of uh, lower the lower emissions on, on different things? It, it, it certainly, it, it helps us uh, to, to show that. But the thing is that uh, we have our main production in Europe, and mm -hmm. we have our secondary production in the the U.S. Uh, in Minnesota, and we source everything locally. So for our production in the U.S., we source the wood from the U.S., we source the seeds from the U.S., uh, and we do the production uh, assembly, engraving, engraving everything. So we we don't import anything from say China mm -hmm. to make our our production. We 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 produce where we sell to shorten okay. the uh, delivery and, and the uh, impact, right? So when we do the LCAs, it it always shows us that there's very little extra we can yeah. do, so yeah. to speak. Right, um, right. So, so that's, that's an important part. So as far as like the promotional products market as a whole, where do you think we are in terms of sustainability? I know, um, I feel like it's something that's talked about a lot more in the U.S. than it was a couple of years ago. But I also think there might be, you know, a lot of greenwashing going on too. So I'm just curious, what, how, how do you think, how do you think the the market is is looking? Are we heading in the right direction? Are, is there a lot of greenwashing? Are we still? I know, I imagine we're still kind of in the U.S. farther behind where Europe is. But what is your sense of that? A, a, a little bit uh, behind uh, at least some countries in Europe. But what I've seen in the past few years, especially after COVID, uh, is um, is a lot of development in the US uh, with a lot more focus on uh, sustainability, sustainability and natural uh, products. Um, I still see, and I've been a, a part of the promotion industry for, for 20, 25 years, um, I still see a lot of products being sourced in China and in Asia. Uh, it's like 80, 90 percent of all the products, actually. Um, and I think that's a big problem. Um, the problem is that the promotional industry is very often, unfortunately, going for quantity rather than quality. Uh, you rather sell... Uh, 20,000 uh, plastic ball pens uh, than uh, 1,000 pencils uh, in, 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 in cases. But I see that changing, and that's mm -hmm. the good news. Uh, and that's because all the big corporations, uh, starting from this year, next year, they must do uh, non-financial uh, reporting, uh, meaning they must uh, document their their uh, CO2 impact uh, on on everything they they purchase, meaning that they must demand from the suppliers, include including the promotional industry, to document, to have LCAs, to be part of the science based targets uh, going towards net zero and so on. So a lot of things are are happening, but I still see a lot of uh, unfortunately greenwashing, uh, a lot of companies talking about sustainable products. I mean, what is that? <laughs> right, right. You have to kind of back it up with actual data to show that this is a lower impact than you know a traditional product or something else. Yeah, and and very importantly, uh, when talking about sustainability, for many many years, it was a marketing gain. Unfortunately, it was a lot of talking, um, but today we are moving towards a, a much more data driven uh, process. So sustainability is not about talking; it's about backing up with data. Okay, so that obviously that's probably one of the, the big trends that's going on with sustainability. But what do you see um, as some other trends that are going to be coming up in the future, uh, whether it's just like this year or in the next you know, five years? What should, what should companies be prepared for? I, I think what we are seeing and what we are starting to see also, because we've seen a supply chain uh, crisis uh, issues uh, under COVID, but also following with the logistics and so on, we are going to see much more uh, production moving um, in, to, in, in, in country. Uh, for instance, uh, in Europe, we'll see much more production in Europe. In the US, we'll see much more production in the US because that's the only way we can control and make sure that 
products are what we say they are, and and we can guarantee quick uh, deliveries. I mean, right. from 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 our facility in Minnesota, we can ship within a few days or a few weeks. Where from China, it would be months uh, on right. Right. So, I mean, it's there's the sustainability piece of having fewer emissions because it's traveling less, but there's also, you know, it's good for your business because you can get it quicker. So there's like kind of a, a double benefit. It, it, it is. It is uh, definitely there's a, there's a double benefit uh, there for, for everyone. It might be uh, in the beginning a little bit more expensive to produce in the US or in Europe, but but the benefits in my uh, opinion, uh, greatly outweighs the, uh, the, the, the this uh, slightly higher price. Yeah, yeah. So what about um, sustainability myths? I feel like there tend to be a lot of misconceptions people have about eco-friendly products. Um, are there some that you see often? And if so, like, how do you deal with them? And, and you you put it right there because you, you uh, use the, the phrase uh, eco-friendly because back, back to what is that? Uh, yeah. that that term is being hugely abused uh, in in marketing mm -hmm. um, b b because that's not there's no data behind there's no it's it's just eco friendly right I've and it's not like cert a certification or anything there's no, no it doesn't it can mean whatever you want it to mean you're kind of putting the value on it that you have but not verifying it it's 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 a word that is a, an absolutely no go in our company. It's it's banned from uh, from everything we say or write. Uh, because well, I'm it's sorry so for bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> of course, no, but but uh, it's a very good example of where we are heading, because yeah. eco friendly is uh, sorry to I have fantastic marketing people myself, but but it, it's a marketing expression that that is very fluffy and sounds good, but there's no backing, there's no data behind. So it's it's it is really much very much illustrating where we are heading. We are heading away from that towards the the, the data driven uh, backup. So what about the term sustainability? Is that kind of a no no too, or do you still are you still okay with that term? Because I don't that doesn't really have anything to back it up either. No no, no you're absolutely right. Um, and and the problem is uh, there's not that many words to replace sustainability. Right, right. Um, and, and, and the problem is that that uh, f uh, also for me, for us, is if if we don't use the term sustainability about what we are doing, then we can we can use other words, but people may not relate to those other words. So in, in terms of, say, marketing, for instance, we must use a word like like sustainability because that's what people are searching for online right. Right. with Google, for instance. Right. Um, but 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 it, it's 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 back to we see that it's it's, it's changing. I mean, uh, companies are talking about. Uh, I mean, we're talking about 100% natural yeah. because we know we can back that claim up, and and that's a little bit more specific. That means all the raw materials, uh, everything is 100% natural. There's nothing right. artificial or. or, or harmful uh, right. and that's the way we should be that's why we yeah. should be living right so i mean i guess sustainability is kind of like a, a good catch-all term but then if you really want people want to prove that you're sustainable then you kind of have to back it up with the data and have more specific kind of claims that you can can also back up Exactly. As an example, I mean, sustainability is the kind of word that uh, you put on your storefront to bring people into the store. But once they are in, in the store, you must be able to show them with data and with, with facts what your products, why are they sustainable? And, and the problem is today a lot of companies, uh, unfortunately also in the uh, promotional industry, is using sustainability to bring people into the, to the shop, but then they lack the, the data and the backup to, to, uh, to show how it's natural and how it's not harming the environment. Right, right. So... For for the promotional industry, um, what advice do you have for for companies, especially for people that are kind of getting started with sustainability? I know you know I I hear it all the time. Like sustainability is a journey, so obviously you can't. I, I think it'd be impossible to just start out like a hundred percent perfect, but there's definitely steps you can be taking along the way to get more sustainable. So what what is what's some advice you have for companies to to start that journey? It's 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 exactly it is a journey and it has to start somewhere. The the problem with uh, when we talk about sustainability, uh, apart from it being a fluffy expression, is that 
um, it's so big, it's so, such a huge task to change your production from, say, China-based to European-based, so so or, or U.S.-based. So you have to, we have to start somewhere, and it's much much better to be at twenty percent than being at 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 zero percent. Uh, the important thing is that you not just talk about the journey towards sustainability. You you must actually show how you plan to 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 get there. Um, we have some very ambitious uh, net zero. Uh, targets uh, for for our whole uh, production, and 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 right now, with the way the world is and with the technology available, it's impossible to become net zero for 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 anyone. Anyone who tells you that they're net zero, th- 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 that's not true. Um, but what we do is that we have we have made a very specific plan on how to change the uh, energy mix in our production. How to go from from uh, diesel uh, diesel uh, trucks or, or from uh, from uh, airplane uh, transportation to electric uh, road only? So so you must be able to show a clear plan and work on a clear plan to to uh, to show how you you get there. Right, right. It's it's, um, it's basically sorry. It's it's basically I call it the the salami method. It's you take the salami and then you cut it in, in, in slices because then it becomes much more easy to work with rather than you try to to do the whole salami at one time. Right, 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 right. Um, and I guess the, another thing is that it's important to make these goals. And like you said, but you actually have to like, yeah, slice it up and, and have the steps because a lot of, you know, I think a lot of companies in the past have gotten kind of slammed for making these lofty goals, but then not meeting them and not really having any kind of concrete way of meeting them. So, you know, saying that you have a goal is meaningless if there's not, you know, steps that you can show you're taking or how you're going to get there. Exactly. It's uh, one way, for instance, is the science-based uh, targets uh, that we have, uh, that we are part of, and, and we they have approved our uh, goals uh, towards net zero where uh, we have already reduced uh, our scope one, scope two by by almost 60% uh, in one year, um, going towards 2029, where we actually want to be net, net zero. But but the fantastic thing about that is that the reduction is in our scope one and two. That means it's, it's what we can do something about. It's mm-hmm. our office, our employees, right. how do they get to the office, right? And, and uh, some are saying that's that's the, the the easy part, which it is. So right now we're working on scope three also. But when we work, uh, when we supply to the promotional industry, for instance, our scope one and two is their scope three. Right. So so when we have our house in order, which we do, it's a it's a huge benefit for the promotional uh, industry to purchase sprout pencils because it helps uh, their scope three and, and for them to get there. Right, right. It is all about kind of working together. So if you have your, like you said, if you have your house in order, that helps, you know, down down the line in the the value chain, um, and it all kind of it all kind of works together that way. Exactly. Um, well, Michael, do you have anything else that you want to add? No, I I, I just um, I, I'm very happy to see that that the promotional industry in de- in general, also in the U.S., are, are very focused on on uh, uh, sustainable products. And it makes so much more sense to uh, to sell something natural uh, rather than just selling another T-shirt or another uh, USB uh, stick, uh, right? And and fortunately, we see a lot of uh, conferences, uh, a lot of hotels, uh, banks, and so on. They're replacing their their ball pens uh, with uh, with Sprout World uh, pencils uh, because it it just it makes so much more uh, sense. Um, people are still talking about uh, three wooden pens, uh, the ball pens, mm-hmm. being uh, a good thing for the environment, but but I'm sorry to say they have ink, uh, they have uh, metal uh, metal parts uh, still, so it doesn't matter that it's made out of wood. It's it's still not good for the environment. So I'm happy to see that there's a lot more focus on on purchasing uh, natural uh, products. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Michael. This has been great. Once again, uh, for ASI Media, I'm Teresa, and this has been Promo Insiders. Thank you.